Welcome back to episode 43. You know, there are some jobs even Dennis is afraid to tackle and it's left to me to take the reins. Okay, maybe that's not the case, but it's nice that I've actually found a job that I can manage unsupervised. In fact, it's not been a bad week for me this week. Plenty of little jobs that I've been able to crack on with while Dennis has been getting on with other mini restorations. I fitted these blanks from Smithy's bits to the vent holes, whilst I decide on how I'll sort out the dashboard area. I've had some really nice messages of support from people watching the channel, although I'm not quite sure why I keep getting asked if I'm related to Alan Shearer. Sometimes it's nice just to get a few of the small jobs done and have a break from the more stressful jobs and each step is always a learning curve. There's a lot of jobs that I wouldn't really want to do myself, even after watching Dennis. Some jobs I think are best left to those with more experience, but some jobs I'm happy to try and do myself. There's a lot of new parts going on the car and I've had people ask if I'm aiming for a concourse standard, but that's definitely not the car that I'm after. The concourse cars do look really, really nice, but I'm after a daily drive, albeit a fair weather daily drive. So whilst I know it looks nice and clean now, it won't be too long before it'll start to look well used. So when we do do a lot of this work, I'd like it to be done as neatly as possible, but I don't think we need to go overboard, because once it starts getting used, I'm sure there'll be water and oil everywhere. The boot hinges are sided and needed to be fixed into the correct place to avoid any issues opening the boot later on. The silicon hoses were thicker than the standard ones, so I had to make the hole bigger in the blanking plate. The car that I'm using is the one that I got with the Metro engine. It's a HIF44 and I fully stripped it and rebuilt it myself. I'm not sure if it's going to work yet, and I may look at buying a new one later down the line when budget allows if I'm not able to get things running smoothly. This is one of those jobs that seems easy enough to attempt, but requires a lot of experience to set up correctly, so we'll have someone look at this when I've finished. Now I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could about the wiring on the car, as this can often be the cause of many a fault, so I took my time with this and referenced the Haynes manual as much as I could. I'm fitting a new loom which makes things a lot easier, but there's still quite a few things that needed altering. I started from the back and I worked my way forwards towards the front of the car, making any necessary notes along the way for later reference. The exhaust that I bought is from Maniflow and I'll do a more detailed video on that later down the line if that's of interest to anyone. For now we just put it on loosely and we'll align it all up later on. Whilst it was on the car lift, it was a good time to fill up the brake lines with fluid and check that the brake pipes were okay. The interior being fitted is from new to commercial. Now I'll be doing a separate video about this, but the car is being taken to Bingley Hall for the Mini Fair 2023 and will be part of the new to commercial stand as part of the new interior lines that will be available soon. The first job was to fit the headlining. 
and to do that we needed to stick up the underlay. I think this is made from coconut fibres and it can be quite a messy job as the fibres seem to go everywhere and it stinks. But it really helps the guide bars to sit properly and it's one of those jobs that once it's done it's out of the way. Plenty of spray glue was enough to stick it to the roof and it's on in just a few minutes. We sprayed both the roof and the underlay, hence why the car has been sheeted up inside. Once that was done we could move on to the headline in itself. The original bars were really rusty so new support bars were used which makes fitting a lot easier. Initially I just presumed it was just a case of fitting the bars up in the correct order and clipping everything on. But it's important to try and get things as evenly spaced as possible at the beginning as you're putting the bars in and I hadn't done that. Luckily Dennis is more experienced than me and spotted my mistake and showed me an easier way to set things out. And once that was done it was just a case of letting it all stretch out for a while before fixing as per instructions. It's one of those jobs that may be done differently by different people but the end result should look the same. Once the front wiring loom was in, I was able to start connecting everything up inside the engine bay. I think the wiring loom was made by AutoSparks, but I purchased it from Bull Mortis. There was one or two differences than my original loom, but they were more improvements really, rather than complications, and fitting was fairly straightforward. We weren't far off being able to start the car for the first time. I had a couple of cans of super unleaded ready to go in so we put them in the petrol tank and filled the engine up with some oil. Bingley Hall was only a few weeks away and it was getting harder for me to film everything as it takes up a lot of time. So as the footage wasn't too in depth I'll just run a little montage instead. I'll take this opportunity as well to apologise for the music. I'm no musician but I make all the background music myself and I know it's not to everyone's taste but hopefully I'll get better as time goes on.
we decided to try and start the car for the first time. We did turn the engine over off camera to allow any oil pressure to build up and I set my camera up ready for the first start. If I'm honest, I wasn't expecting it to start straight away, so I was really surprised when it started up so quickly. <laughs> concerned at one point because the room filled up with smoke, but apparently that's normal as it's the greased paint and other things burning off the freshly coated parts like the exhaust for instance. Eventually the smoke cleared and it was time to crack on with the rest of the job. With it being close to Christmas, we decided to get the car rolling and trailer it to my house for Christmas and New Year so I could get on with some of the jobs that I felt more confident with. This was a good idea as it meant that I could take my time with a few things like fitting the rest of the carpets and interior and finishing off the dashboard and the wiring. It's getting a lot closer to the finishing line and with only a few weeks to go before Bingley, it looks like I'm going to have a very busy Christmas and New Year working on the car. 